Hey, how's it going folks? Today, I'm going to show you how your car's engine's cooling system works and operates, but not just that. I'm also going to walk you through a diagnosis procedure for a car with suspected cooling system issues. Now, before we get started, I'd just like to mention that if you see any tools or products used in this video that pique your interest, I'll put links to them in the description box, so don't be afraid to click on them and check them out. All right, so the job of your cooling system is to first make sure that the temperature of your engine does not rise beyond a certain point. And the components that help it to achieve this are going to be the radiator, radiator cooling fans that could be electronically controlled like this one here, or fans that are belt driven like what we have on this Ford here. And a belt driven water pump, which of course is responsible for circulating coolant throughout your cooling system. Now your cooling system also has a second function, which is to make sure that your engine reaches a preset operating temperature before it starts cooling it down. And how it's able to do this is by using a thermostat, which is what you see right here. All right, so we'll do a quick demonstration of how everything works together on this whiteboard. And for the sake of argument, we're gonna assume that we're going to start our engine from a cold start. All right, so from a cold start, our thermostat is going to be in the closed position, which is the position you see here. In the closed position, it does not allow for any coolant to pass through it. So here's our thermostat on this diagram. And when this is closed, it keeps coolant inside the engine. So inside your block, you have these coolant passages that are there so that coolant can circulate through your cylinder block and keep the cylinder block cool during normal operation. And of course, you also have them inside your cylinder head all around the combustion chambers as well. So the job of your thermostat is to remain closed until the coolant inside your engine reaches a preset temperature. And then this valve opens and allows for the circulation of coolant throughout your cooling system. And once the thermostat opens, your water pump is gonna pump coolant through this upper radiator hose into your radiator. And once coolant gets inside your radiator, it's cooled down by exchanging its heat through the fins of your radiator. And then from there, once it's cooled, it goes back to the engine and runs through the engine and keeps it cool. And then from there again, the whole cycle repeats itself. Now I should mention that not always coolant flows from the lower radiator hose through the engine to the upper radiator hose. Sometimes it goes the other way around. And when it goes the other way around, your thermostat is going to be right here where your radiator hose goes to your engine, keeping the coolant inside your engine. As is going to be the case on this 2000 Subaru Legacy with a 2.5 liter engine. So on this engine, coolant flows from this one into the engine. And once the coolant is properly warmed, the thermostat would open and then from there, it would flow back through the radi radiator and the whole thing would repeat itself. All right, so that was simple enough, but now let's go diagnose and fix a car that I suspect has some cooling issues. But before we do that, we're gonna do something. Actually, you guys can probably guess just by listening what's about to happen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, ice cream. And the vehicle we're gonna be working on is going to be this 1996 Chevy truck with a 5.7 liter V8 gas engine. And the issue we're having with this truck is that the temperature gauge does not rise after the car is supposedly warmed up. So we're gonna check the thermostat first because that's gonna be the main culprit. If that's not it, then it would probably be either the coolant temperature sensor or the gauge in the dash. But we're gonna start off with the thermostat. All right, so things are gonna be a little tight here, but here's a look at our upper radiator hose. And if we follow that, obviously that goes to our thermostat. And all the way here on the other side, on the lower side of the radiator, right down there, if you can make it out, there's our lower radiator hose. So next, we're gonna start our engine. But you wanna make sure you start with a cold engine. All right, so here's the temperature for our upper radiator hose, 90 degrees. And the temperature for our lower radiator hose, just about the same. Now if our thermostat and the cooling system is working properly, the temperature for the radiator hose while the thermostat is closed should remain just about 90 degrees, but the temp temperature for the lower radiator hose should start to climb now. All right, so it's been a few minutes since the engine's been running. Let's recheck our temperatures. Here's our upper radiator hose at 108. That's interesting. And here's our lower radiator hose at 108 also. So there, there's a clear example of a thermostat that's stuck in the open position. Thermostat is stuck open, therefore it doesn't allow for your engine to properly warm up. 
See when it's stuck open at startup, the coolant just continuously flows through your cooling system and that its temperature is not allowed to rise to the correct level. And again, another sign that your thermostat is stuck open is you not being able to get any warm air inside the car. And there's a look at our temperature gauge after about seven minutes, stuck at pretty much 100. All right, so there now that we have verified that our thermostat is indeed stuck open, we're gonna replace our thermostat. All right, in order to remove our thermostat, we're gonna first start off by removing our air filter housing. And we're gonna do that by removing these two bolts here. And then this one on the side. And then we're gonna loosen this clamp that's attaching it to our MAF sensor. All right, now we should be able to get it out of here. All right, next we'll go inside the car and then we need to obviously remove the little piece that's covering our engine. It's pretty easy. There it is. It's uh, only held on there by four bolts, two on the bottom and two on the sides. And then there's of course this little plastic cover that's sitting over it. And then using my long ratcheting wrenches, I'm gonna remove this bolt that's holding in this air tube that's going to the top of our throttle body. So now we can just lift up on this, on this end, and then go to the front of the engine. And then on this end, we're gonna first remove this connector that goes to our MAF sensor, and then wiggle this, and we should be able to get it out of here. There's gonna be a, another connector for our inlet air temperature sensor that's just behind our MAF sensor and also a PCV hose that's on the side. I'll show you in a bit. So there, this is the PCV hose that goes on the side that you need to remove. All right, so if you follow the upper radiator hose, it goes around, loops around, and there is look at our thermostat housing. It looks like there are two studs on this side and that side that are holding it in. This one also has an extra nut here that also holds a ground cable. That's very important and you wanna make sure you put that back when you go to reinstall this. And here's a look at a coolant temperature sensor that's just on here. So we're gonna actually remove this one first. All right, so first this upper bolt. And there's the nut that's holding this ground wire in. Now before we remove those two nuts that are holding our thermostat housing in, it's a good idea obviously to drain the coolant from your engine. All right, so here's the rear one. All right, now we'll just pull this and then let the rest of the coolant drain out. There we go. All right, here's a look at our suspect. I'm just gonna yank it out of here. There we go. And well, what do you know? It is stuck open. You can see right through it, right there. And here's a look at our new thermostat. And as you can see, it is closed. And it only is supposed to open when it reaches a predetermined temperature, which is 195 degrees for this thermostat. All right, so we'll put our New thermostat back in, make sure it's evenly seated where it's supposed to be. And then I'm gonna spend some time cleaning the mating surface on this end. On the thermostat side, it's not as important because there's a little seat or a groove where the seal goes inside. All right, so putting it back together is gonna to be pretty much the reversal of removal from here. So I'm not gonna get that on video, but We'll cut to the next, we'll cut to where we're gonna do the temperature test on our upper and lower radiator hoses. All right, here we go. All right, a few minutes later, this upper one is about 80, 81. This lower one, however, is now about 92, 92 and a half. Now the temperature of these hoses is not obviously the temperature of the coolant. For that, we're gonna go inside the car and check our temperature gauge. All right, as you can see, it's only been a couple of minutes, but we're already up to about 150 according to our gauge. So things are definitely working proper right now. All right, still in the low 80s. And this bottom one is now about 123, four, and climbing steadily. And our thermostat just opened, I believe. Now we're at 119, 120 on this upper one. And we're much cooler now on the lower one, about 98. So that's about 20 degrees or so cooler. Again, that's the temperature difference between the two hoses. I don't exactly know how much cooler the coolant is when it passes through our radiator, but it's obviously much cooler. So that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, though, do me a favor and share this video on your favorite social network. And also consider checking out these other related videos of which I've put links to on this side of the screen that you can click on. There will also be links in the description box down below as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.